The Trump administration continues to clash with China, Europe, and Canada over trade, how escalating global trade tensions are affecting the U.S. economy. Joining me now, President of the American Action Forum, Doug Holtzik. And Doug, great to have you here. Always a pleasure to see you. Thanks, Jerry. Let's start right there, though. That big picture, the, the impacts of this trade battle on the economy. The president says we can't let China get away with their bad policy practices. And last night he even said, hey, there was a trade war. We lost it. So if the president yeah. tinkers with trade policy in the meantime, what are the risks to the U.S. economy? Well, I mean, here's what's at stake. The U.S. economy has steadily accelerated. If you look at year-over-year -year GDP growth uh, in the first quarter of 2017, it was 2 percent, something we've seen for years. It's ramped up every quarter, and in the first quarter of this year, it was 2.8 percent. Most people think this quarter, the second quarter, is even stronger than that. We're going to be north of three. Some people think approaching four. So. Uh, that's, that's growth that the American people have wanted for a long time, and that's what's at risk, and, and that's why people are worried about this. If you look at the, the Trump administration's approach, it's clear they've identified the right country. I mean, China is a bad actor on the global stage. The only disagreements I, I see are whether they've got the right strategy for getting them to deliver on their international promises. And yeah, we know exactly. That the, and, you know, people talk about you know, whether it should it be tariffs, should we be making sure that we protect our intellectual property? What are the biggest, what are the most important things to go after here, and how do you do it, Doug? Uh, the most important things in the eyes of the administration are the, the components of the so-called 2025 plan. Right. This is an ambitious plan by China to dominate global uh, research and development in, in artificial intelligence and other advanced technologies. So guarding U.S. technological prowess, intellectual property, is central. The question is, what's the link between tariffs that right. are often on our intermediates that make our goods more expensive and those intellectual property protections? So I, I think if you step back and look at the concerns of critics of the Trump administration, what they say is, look, we get it, but we want to know what actions you want China to take, like what could we see them do differently and how fast and how will we know if the strategy is working because if we don't see that, all we see is tariffs that are hurting our economy. Well, okay, answer the question then. How do you go after that? What is the best way to protect our intellectual property? Uh, we're seeing additional efforts by both the administration and the Congress on export controls. You may not send out of this country these technologies, these uh -huh. uh, particular innovations. We're seeing uh, a, a lot of attention paid to uh, inbound investments, purchases by Chinese companies in particular, of U.S. firms as a way to acquire those technologies, so vet those uh, transactions. And if they endanger uh, national security, say no, that, that's not acceptable. So those are uh, well-established procedures that can be beefed up. I think we'll see a lot more of that out of both Congress and the administration. Seems to me that has a lot of economic impact, and I know corporate America is yelling yeah. about doing that. They don't. They hate that kind of control. You see what came out of Harley Davidson? Like you're messing with our oh, our, yeah. our business strategy here. But before you go, I've got to get you to something else here: the inversion of the yield curve. Okay, that sounds like really wonky and scary stuff. It's just this <laughs> it, secret it <laughs> sauce. It's, it's a secret uh, detail from the markets that traders look at that portends economic recession. Right now, that economic indicator portending economic recession, the yield curve has flattened out. And yet, as you suggested at the beginning of this interview, GDP estimates, some of them for the second quarter, 4.5%. So who's right here? Uh, it's going to be a great test. Uh, if you look at formal models of the probability of recession, most of them put the probability at something like 10% over the next 18 months, yet we've seen the yield curve flatten. Historically, that has portended a slowdown or even a recession. So those two indicators are in str uh, strong contrast right now. I, I personally am coming down against the yield curve on this one. I think the next 18 months, uh, there's, a, there's enough in the pipeline in terms of good policy from the tax reform, the dramatic reduction in regulations that, that it's unlikely we'll see a downturn. Uh, but I, I would acknowledge there is a lot of reason that people look at the yield curve. It has historically been a good indicator. All right, Doug. So great to hear from you. And I like your opinion on the economy. That would be better than the opposite, <laughs> right? Thank you so much for coming on. Yes. Great to see you. My pleasure.